you need to understand life as you know it. What you right now call as me is life. Maybe right now you are referring to just your personality, which is essentially a bundle of thoughts, emotions, opinions, ideas and prejudices. Of course, I am missing out the important thing. <laughs> Leaving that part of your personality, if you just refer to this as me, essentially you are referring to this life. This life process is me. This life process has not grown, please see. It is the same life process. If you do not remember the womb, at least you remember when you are five, six, seven, eight years of age. When the body was that small, it was the same life process. Now it is the same life process. It will be the same unless, unless you become free from the five elements and then it bursts open into a different possibility. This whole terminology of spiritual growth is a false terminology because there is no such thing as spiritual growth. Either you explode into another state or you don't. No, many times I did explode but again, I'm the same. That's because you know, during the Diwali time, if you try to light the crackers, there are some crackers, you light them <laughs> You thought they're going to go boom, but they do <laughs> You light them again <laughs> Then you have to really poke some, just a, a small little, you know, the, the incense stick that you're using is not enough, you really have to put something bigger fire inside, then they go boom. But then you have to be careful because they're going to explode too quick in your face. So, your experiences of those moments when you almost exploded is like that. I almost became boundless. I want you to experiment this almost. I almost had my dinner. I almost went to the toilet. I almost had my breakfast. Please do that for the next three days. I almost, I almost, I almost. Then you will be ready to explode in some way. So all those things which really matter, either you do it or you don't do it. Spiritual process, you almost, you keep on almosting. So, how did I become a full-fledged human being? You have not become a full-fledged human being. I'm not trying to insult you, I'm just reminding you, you have not become a full-fledged human being. A full-fledged human being is too immense to be described. He is not a humbug, a made-up thing. A full-fledged human being is a phenomenon and that will not happen slowly. Yes, you have to cultivate it every day for it to explore one day, but it doesn't happen slowly. Slowly you can create the situation. Slowly you can create the situation. But explosion is one time and even it happens nobody can miss it. Neither you can miss it, 
nor anybody around you can miss it because it's there to see. So, how does this little piece of life, these two cells that met in somebody's womb, became a meatball to start with, became a life process and now a human being. Human being, yes, not a full-fledged human being, no. This has to become a full-fledged human being means the same things that nurture you are the same things which bind you. The same things which look like the source of your life are also the limitations upon your life. That is why people are so confused as to what to remove and what to keep. All the things that you think are the goodies or the baddies too, that's a problem. If it was very simple, goodies were different, baddies were different, very easy to dump the baddies. The goodies are baddies, baddies are goodies, that is the problem. So, you have to dump the goodies and the baddies or you have to embrace the goodies and the baddies. Embracing the goodies and the baddies is very difficult. Your life would become very multi-dimensional if you could, but you cannot do that. You may pretend to do, do that. People's idea of embracing everything is, they try to paint everything as good. And they call themselves saints. There is nothing saintly about it. It's quite silly, not being able to see what is what in the world is not saintliness, it's just being silly. But uh, it passes off as saintliness. I see goodness in everything. It's not saintly, it is silly. <laughs> different things are different ways. If you don't know how to deal with it, you're just being silly, not being saintly. But unfortunately, you pass this off as saintliness. Being able to see everything just the way it is and still being able to accept it absolutely the way it is, takes a lot. So it's better to keep a little distance from everything. Keep small distance, you don't have to run away, just a little distance from everything. You deal with everything but with a little distance. This is a easier way to handle. I'm not saying it is a better way, it is a good way, I'm just saying it's easier way. If you like to do it the more exciting and more difficult way, you're welcome. Only if you have the strength not to break up on the way, you attempt that. Otherwise, it's better to keep a little distance. You look at on everything, it doesn't matter for me whether it's good or bad. From everything I keep a little distance, from everything. Now what is this Sadhguru? Just in the beginning you were talking about love, now you're talking about distance. Only because there is distance you can love, please know that. If you create anything which is receptive, life will naturally come to it. It doesn't matter who you are, generally a womb is a natural space which has been created with that possibility that if a little formation happens there, actually it's just a meatball at that time. It's a very wrong way to… obscene way of referring to you when you were a fetus in your mother's womb, an obscene way of saying it. I am saying it this way because I want you to understand it's just a meatball. Even now you are just a meatball. Except for the life process that is throbbing within you, you are just a meatball, aren't you? Tch. What is this Sadhguru? What? All these insults, meatball, water body, what else are you going to call us? If the life doesn't throb within you, you are just a meatball. 
If a tiger walks in right now, he goes for you, he sees you as a meatball, I want you to know. Yes or no? He doesn't see you as a possible tea for enlightenment. He doesn't see you as some great something. He sees you as a meatball and he'll treat you as a meatball and he'll make you into a meatball. Yes or no? If you don't like it, if you want to experiment, walk into the forest and see. An elephant may treat you as a football <laughs> but a tiger will treat you as a meatball. Football you are not. Some of you are working towards it <laughs> but you are not a football. That's a wrong perception of the elephant. But tiger's perception is right, you are a meatball, isn't it? So before life entered, you are definitely a meatball. But suddenly, suddenly, the moment this life entered, suddenly this just meatball becomes a live process and a tremendous possibility. A little meatball, what a possibility it's become. That meat meatball also became a Buddha, that meatball also became a Krishna, that meatball became so many wonderful things on this planet. So I want you to understand that today what you are is not the point. If you allow it to function, this process of life, if you allow it to burst open, then the possibilities are immense. Nature has delivered you here to this level of intelligence, to this level of capability, to this level of consciousness, free. Total free ride, isn't it? From being an amoeba, a single cell, micro creature to what you are today, absolute free ride, isn't it so? Total free ride without even you asking for it. Here, just here, you are expected to do your own thing. And don't treat it as a burden, it is a privilege that now nature has decided, the creator has decided that you are worthy of being given a choice as to how you live. This is the greatest privilege that the Creator Himself has decided that you are worthy of being given the choice to be whichever way you want to be. Please prove your worthiness, don't disappoint Him. Lot of people in the world are depressed simply because of the Creator's work, isn't it so? They are questioning His judgment also. That which is the very basis of who you are, that which brought you from being a single-celled micro-creature to who you are right now without unasked, it brought you till here. You are questioning the judgment of that also. Why is creation like this? Why is it like this? It should have been some other way. This is not intelligence. Don't ever convince yourself to think this is intelligence. This is a height of ignorance. The privilege that has been handed over to you, that now your life is your own, everything is by choice. This moment how you are is your choice. Please enjoy the privilege. Please exercise the privilege. And only then you can say, I am a full-fledged human being. May this happen to you.